Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Am I audible? Hey, Vish, how are you? Am I audible? Am I audible? Hey Hardik, hey Partheep, good evening. Samreen, good evening. How are you all? So though we are in connect, like I am in connect with all of you, you keep uh, sending me messages on the Telegram and also on the app as well, email me, right? And from all the queries, what I am trying, like I'm getting is you guys are not able to connect one part of the biochemistry with the, another part of biochemistry and then unable to correlate it with the other classes. See, biochemistry is a very basic subject, right? And But that is very necessary to understand the underlying mechanism. And we, I always keep saying to you. So what I have figured it out, ki how to make the biochemistry easy for you? How should I do that? I should tell you the clinical related scenario. Then starting from the zero, I should be telling you what is going on and how it is related to this disease. So it is kind of an integrated. I should do the integration for you guys because you are a medical student. So correlating biochemistry with the disease is going to help you. So I have designed entire chapter, uh, like entire chapter, not entire session based upon that, right? Hey, Vishant. Dr. Glucagon, <laughs> namaste. You are you are really important, right? So today what I'm going to do is I'll start with a question. But this question has so many topics and so many questions can, can be made out of this. Just this one clinical scenario. So make sure when you are studying uh, any question, you should be able to figure out all the things that revolves around this question. Definitely, you should be knowing what is the correct option because that is going to help you score in the exam. But the question itself contains various topics which are in most of the cases, you can say high yield topics for the exam. So you must study those high yield topics also so that you are able to solve other questions in case if they come in the exam. This question is very simple question for you guys, but most of you get confused because there are so many things in there. An infant of age of five months, right? He was on breast fat, right? And clinical examination is like he was having the vomiting, diarrhea, jaundice, hepatomegaly, bilateral cataract. Can anybody tell me what is the correct choice for this question? What is the correct choice the direction uh, this uh, question whether the baby is suffering from the von Gerke, he is having the classical galactosemia or juvenile diabetes mellitus or hereditary fructose intolerance. We have four choices. Right? Answer to this is answer to this is what? Baby is on rest fed right so he is consuming lactose 
is consuming lactose he has nothing to do with the fructose intolerance because fructose you will see when the question will say the table food or then or it will say what it will say maybe a uh, baby has uh, had the uh, let's say some kind of a syrup or juices then you will go to this answer to this is classical galactosemia yes 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 pradeep vishant sayed bonjit anirban hardik vishant samreen yes you all are correct seems very easy question but it can be tricky too what i'm going to do is from this question i'm going to interrelate all the various metabolic pathways how you are going to distinguish between a galactosemia condition or the hereditary fructose intolerance or maybe the lactose intolerance in the case or maybe other diseases or maybe the rate limiting enzymes that are involved in those pathways so i'm going to connect all of those things okay von gerke disease why is not von gerke disease first of all von gerke disease is because of glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme i'm going to touch that as well okay so this is not the case and also in this case patient don't have the bilateral cataract in only galactosemia you have patient is having bilateral cataract why is the bilateral cataract cataract we will look into that also that is another very high yield topic in hereditary fructose intolerance again there is no bilateral cataract why not a dm because we are not talking about any the, the question is not giving you hypoglycemic hyperglycemic or any kind of this thing so this uh, option c is also we are gonna rule it out okay so let's begin our today's session so everything is related if you skip a part you won't be able to understand the next part of it okay so let's start with baby had what baby has just consumed what baby has just consumed the lactose right lactose Leah lactose in your body is get digested into lactose is what lactose is a disaccharide so you have lactase enzyme which is going to convert it into monosaccharide those monosaccharides are glucose and another is galactose here is the culprit right here is the culprit and galactose can be converted glucose and galactose do you know the relationship between glucose and galactose anybody can tell me what is the relationship between glucose and the galactose another important question they both are hexose sugar first of all they both are hexose sugar right and they both are hexose sugar and aldose or ketose they are ketos they are ketose sugar right what are they they are what what is the relationship dono ke beech mein in the glucose and the galactose how they are related glucose and galactose they are what they are epimers they are epimers they are epimers in the sense in this you have right left right right okay but in the galactose you have right left right uh, sorry left and right do you see this sorry this one so they are c4 epimers of glucose so you if you have to consume the glu galactose in the body you need to convert it into glucose an easy way to say is what you can have the enzyme epimerase and just convert galactose into glucose actually my dear that does not happen directly as such there is an entire mechanism to convert galactose into glucose another high yield topic now so you know they are epimers of each other right i'm going to erase this they are epimers of each other lactose is converted into glucose and galactose right and now body has to take care of the galactose how it is going to do it is galactose is brought inside right inside the cell where galactose will be converted into first what galactose 1 galactose 1 phosphate and who is the enzyme phosphate is added by the enzyme kinase in this case is the we are calling it as galactokinase enzyme 
galactokinase enzyme is converted into galactose 1 phosphate now this galactose 1 phosphate will be converted into into what into glucose 1 phosphate and there, there is a very specific enzyme for that and that we call it as galt enzyme galt enzyme galt enzyme stands for what galactose Anybody can type me what is the full form for gal galt? Galt is galactose is with what? Very important. Galactose 1-phosphate, the name of the substrate. And after that, what is the name? Galactose 1-phosphate. What else? What else? What else? Uridyl transferase. Very important enzyme for the examination point of view also they have asked in the previous question papers in ionized okay so galt is the enzyme that helps in conversion of galactose one phosphate to glucose one phosphate and who is helping us we have entity known as udp glucose udp glucose comes in right and this glucose is exchanged by the galactose and who leaves then u d u u d p galactose leaves and this u d p galactose is then converted to u d p glucose by the enzyme epimerase this is how we convert galactose into glucose not directly and we should be knowing this have you seen udp glucose somewhere have you seen udp glucose somewhere everybody has seen this udp glucose somewhere where you have seen it there is an interconnect this is an interconnect with what this is interconnect with what glycogen do you remember glycogen all of you anybody can you type the message in UDP glucose is collect, connected with what? Glycogen synthase enzyme. Glycogen synthesis may when we are doing the glycogen, when we are synthesizing the glycogen during the fed state. Glycogen synthase make use of the UDP glucose and stores the glucose in the form of the glycogen. And this is happening when? In the fed state. In the fed state in the fed state so who is triggering the glycogen synthesis which hormone is active in the fed state and activates the glycogen synthase insulin is the hormone insulin is the hormone right and during the fasting state fasting state starts usually when when do you use the glycogen stores after three to four hours after three to up to three to four hours after eating is the fed state you have enough glucose in your blood which can be used but after three to four hours the blood glucose level goes down then we make use of the glycogen stores right up to 12 hours even these glycogen stores are depleted so let's say you are eating something in the night so by morning your entire glycogen levels are depleted and then if you eat little bit later during the morning time thoda sa bhi late khaoge khana and uh, then you will be on your you the body will start the fatty acid oxidation so if you do exercise during the morning times that helps you to reduce weight very much because of this thing okay now the fasting state is there in the fasting state glycogen stores are consumed and which enzyme is there which enzyme is there glycogen phosphorylase is active now and this glycogen phosphorylase is activated by mustafa very right glucagon which is a fasting enzyme right and it will remove glucose one by one so that is the story of the udp glucose how you are connecting this into that and now you know when the fed state and fasting state what happens okay now coming back to our lactose thing so when you have this gelt enzyme this gelt enzyme deficient right that leads to that leads to a diseased condition known as 
skeletosemia. Skeletosemia, that is the answer to the question. That is skeletosemia. So what do you expect in galactosemia? What do we expect in galactosemia? Or you can say, kya hoga isme? Anybody? How we are getting cataract? Anybody can help me with this? This galactose will start accumulating in the body. Okay, it is not getting converted into glucose. It is not getting converted into glucose. So galactose will start accumulating in the body, right? And in the lens when it's accumulate. What is galactose? Galactose is an aldose sugar, right? It is an aldose sugar. So there is an enzyme aldose reductase. Is going to do the reduction of this aldehyde into alcohol and alcohol form of galactose is galactitol is what is galactitol galactitol is a kind of alcohol right and this is osmotically this is osmotically active and it is going to suck in the water from the nearby and it is going to cause what cataract That is how the patient suffering from galactosemia or suffering from the, this enzyme deficiency in the galactosemia, you will see what the cataract, which is not seen in the fructose, right? Which is not seen in the fructose intolerance and also not in the von Gerke disorder, right? Rest every, every symptom, the vomiting, diarrhea, jaundice, hepatomegaly, you will see in the question, in the cl clinical case scenario, just you will by based upon the presence or absence of the cataract, you are going to make the difference, okay? Now, what happens in the fructose? If you consume the fructose, too much of the fructose in the diet. Fructose is coming. You can either have direct fructose or you can have table sugar. Table sugar is your sucrose. Table sugar is your sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide. It will be converted into glucose plus the fructose okay table sugar remember is the sucrose fructose is not the table sugar it is a byproduct of this and the enzyme involved is sucrase glucose can be used as such in the body right but fructose you need to convert fructose will be converted into what fructose will be converted into what Can you convert fructose into glucose? How we convert fructose into glucose? Galactose, ko to we have seen it. How we convert fructose into glucose? There is the enzyme. What kind of enzyme? Fructokinase. Which will convert fructose into fructose 1-phosphate or 6-phosphate. It will be fructose 1-phosphate enzyme. Right? It is the fructose 1-phosphate enzyme which will be converted or which will be, I should rather say, cleaved. Cleaved by the enzyme aldolase. Aldolase and there is a specific kind of aldolase here. What is that? Aldolase B. Aldolase B converts fructose 1, cleaves the fructose 1, 6 phosphate, 1 phosphate. So it is a 6 carbon thing. Right, these dots are representing the six carbon, and for on the first position you have the phosphate. So when you are going to break it, one half is having the phosphate, another half is not having the phosphate. What is that half? If you remember glycolysis, what do you get? You get glyceraldehyde three phosphate and DHAP dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So when aldolase B attacks on fructose one phosphate, what do you get? You get dihydroxyacetone phosphate. But another portion is not glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. It is just glyceraldehyde. It is just glyceraldehyde. There is no phosphate to it. So you need to add a phosphate to convert it into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Only then it can go and join the 
glycolysis. This can go to the glycolysis cycle. This can go and join the glycolysis pathway. And what is this enzyme? Enzyme is a kind of a kinase. What kind of a kinase? Since this is acting on a three carbon molecule. So we call it as triose kinase. We call it as triose kinase. Then you have the glyceraldehyde three phosphate. And they can both join, molecules can join the glycolysis pathway. This is how we are using the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or you can say we are consuming the fructose. We are directing to the fructose to the glycolysis. What was glycolysis? What was glycolysis here? Glycolysis is you have the glucose. Glucose to glucose. What? glucose 6 phosphate to glucose of fructose 6 phosphate right then fructose fructose what 1 6 bisphosphate am i right 1 6 bisphosphate you get from this again enzyme what kind of enzyme cleaves it here this enzyme aldolase b you have another kind of aldolase here and usually that aldolase is aldolase a that is aldolase A and now this time fructose is again a 6 carbon molecule. Fructose is a 6 carbon molecule. Two, three, four, five, six, and first position and the 6th position you have phosphate and when you break it you get 2 carbon fragments, 2, 3, 3 carbon fragments both containing phosphate. That is why you get what? you get glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate plus DHAP, right? These are isomers of each other. So you can convert dihydroxyacetone phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and the process carries on. So are we okay? Can we correlate? Yes, yes, Ronak Patel, aldolases A and B. Can anybody tell me the, how many kind of aldolases we have? We have three kind of aldolases. We have three kind of aldolases, aldolase A, aldolase B, aldolase C. Aldolase A, B, C and they vary upon their location. Do you know where aldolase A is found? Aldolase A is mostly found in the muscle as well as erythrocytes. Okay, aldolase B is found majorly in liver. Aldolase C is found majorly in where? Brain. If they ask you about the location, usually it's not asked, but now you know in the glycolysis you see aldolase A, in the fructose you see aldolase B, right? When you are breaking fructose 1,6 bisphosphate, you are getting two fragments, two, three carbon fragments. Both are having phosphate, but when you are breaking fructose 1 phosphate, Right, you are getting one fragment having phosphate, one fragment without the phosphate, and that you need to phosphorylate by the enzyme triose kinase. By the enzyme triose kinase. So this is the fate of glyceraldehyde. There is one more fate of glyceraldehyde that you see where that you see in the fatty acid synthesis. This glyceraldehyde that is produced via the fructose can be converted into glycerol. Very important correlation. I'm telling you, hidden correlation. Secret A. Glyceraldehyde can be converted into glycerol. How we can, can convert glyceraldehyde into glycerol? Which enzyme is there? There is enzyme glyceraldehyde. Dehydrogenase. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Ronak Patel, very good. Mustafa, Jayant, great. So glycerol, and where do you see glycerol? Have you seen glycerol in fatty acid synthesis? In right, glycerol is used in the fatty acid synthesis, and how it is used? It is used as glycerol three phosphate. It is used as a glycerol three phosphate. Remember that glycerol three phosphate. Glycerol is what? Glycerol is, I have told you in fatty acid biosynthesis very clearly. 
ग्लिसरोल इज अ थ्री कार्बन मॉलिक्यूल राइट ऑल और हैविंग हाइड्रोक्सिल ग्रुप सो एवरी टाइम यू मेक अ फैटी एसिड राइट यू अटैच अ फैटी एसिड हीदर दैट इज अ मोनो असाइल दिस वॉज द ट्राई असाइल आई एम नॉट गोइंग इन डिटेल यू कैन जस्ट वॉच द फैटी एसिड बाय सिंथेसिस वीडियो राइट That is your triacyl glycerol, but in which form we need it? We need it in the form of glycerol three phosphate. And when you have to convert this into glycerol three phosphate, glycerol to glycerol three phosphate, definitely a kind of a kinase. What kind of kinase? Glycerol kinase enzyme is being used here, right? And this glycerol three phosphate, right, can combine with fatty acids. can combine with fatty acid and then what happens esterification process if you remember from the fatty acid biosynthesis esterification process happens and then you get what you get triglycerides which hexokinase is related to hypothalamus i'll come back when we will discuss all kind of hexokinases there are various isoenzymes dr sandeep okay let me finish this first okay so are we clear up to here so many a times there are question how fructose diet really really high level of fructose intake right or sugar syrup intake can lead to obesity see can you see the trend now Sada fructose is going to create more of the glyceraldehyde, right? And then glyceraldehyde will be converted into glycerol, and that glycerol will be taken down for the triglyceride synthesis. So, what is happening? Causing the obesity, and this these triglycerides are going to get deposited around the tissues, right? Giving the cardiovascular disorders. Mm hmm. Right. now here are few facts before i jump into uh, other things about the fructose write these facts down these are very important for the clinical point of view see fructose do not raise blood glucose why the glycemic index glycemic index in short i write it as gi is low rather it is used in treating right rather it is used in controlling the glycemia right hyperglycemia it is like it is given to the patient so it its glycemic index is low that can be a part of your nutrition chapter also but this is how it is related you have just seen it it is related to the obesity problem but it is not raising the blood glucose level it is helping to synthesize the more of the fatty acid that what it do, does okay but how it is related to the you can say it is not directly related to the diabetes also but it causes what it causes insulin resistance syndrome right it causes insulin resistance which is related to obesity and type 2 dm but mark this fact there still a debate going on that it causes that diabetes or not but in your question paper as far as i know according to updates it do not cause diabetes but actually it contributes to the insulin resistance syndrome which over the period of time leads to the diabetes medicine faculty dr thameem might make it more clear right but this is the fact as far as the biochemistry point of view is there okay another fact fructose do not decreases appetite what do we mean by that if let's say you have you ate something with the fructose it is not kill you it is not going to kill your hunger glucose kills like fills you in fructose do not fill you in do not fill your tummy that is the simplest one right but rather it promotes rather it promotes hunger 
more you eat it, more you need it. Why? Because it develops leptin resistance. It develops leptin resistance, right? And thereby disturbing the body's fat regulation. Body ka fat regulation is gonna get disturbed. So, which will lead to the obesity. Which will lead to the obesity. These are the few facts you should be knowing about. Okay. Are we clear up to this point? There are more things about the fructose, but let, let me just hold on to that. Okay. The, uh, there is another question that can be asked in the uh, exam like which one has the least uh, like sugar into it what kind of the maple syrup maple syrup has the least um, sugary thing what else the corn not the corn but the coconut syrup syrup then the dates dates khajur liquids lowest glycemic index of the sugary things okay the lowest glycemic index of the sugary things right and there are more few facts only one percent of the fructose is converted into converted into triglycerides at the normal conditions when you are eating excessive like too much of eating is gonna lead to obesity that is way way too high level but in regular conditions, when you are eating just the right amount of the fructose, right, 1% is converted into triglycerides, 29 to 54%, 29 to 54% approximately, these are the random numbers, will be converted into glucose in the liver, right? And the one fourth will be converted, you can say the quarter is converted into lactate is converted into lactate and approximately 15% is stored in the form of the glycogen. Usually they don't ask this number but many students have this confusion. We are having the fructose but where it is going? It varies. It varies from person to person. The kind of fructose they are taking, right? What kind of lifestyle it has? So it varies but it is going to give you a like, fair amount of an idea ki what is going on in the body. It's not every fructose is going to get converted into the triglyceride no a very small amount when it is taken into a nominal kind of a ratio if you are consuming too much then this number really cranks up right and for the also for the prolonged period of time not just for one week or two weeks but for like months you are having the high fructose then it is gonna lead to the obesity problems okay all the packaged syrup packaged food they have the high corn fructose uh, high corn fructose right that is very dangerous very very dangerous because it is gonna crank up the body triglycerides level okay so this is one thing and there is a uh, another thing i wanted to discuss here i have done aldo lace i have done this great lactase 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 deficiency causes what kind of problem? No patel, uh, no ronak fructose increases the appetite. It do not decreases the appetite. It increases rather it does. Okay. So lactase, lactase deficiency, lactase deficiency gives you what? What happens in the lactase deficiency? Enzyme deficiency. It creates lactose intolerance. It creates what? Lactose intolerance. Am I right? Or am I right? Lactose intolerance. So baby is gonna vomit. Baby is going to vomit a lot. As soon as he will have the milk, maybe the breast milk, he's gonna vomit. What else? Bloating. In the clinical case scenario, we'll see this. And what else? The explosive diarrhea. Explosive diarrhea. 
right so how you are going to figure out whether the patient has the lactose intolerance or the galactosemia you have seen fructose like hereditary fructose intolerance or abhi galactosemia and there is hereditary fructose intolerance most of the symptoms would be same the vomiting the bloating and all those things but in lactose intolerance what we don't see first of all the cataract cataract is not seen in galactosemia hallmark is the cataract hallmark is the cataract hfi no cataract and i can prove you that also why not cataract but let's focus on the lactose intolerance first there is no cataract and how you are going to figure out the baby is have is lactose intolerant there is a what is happening to the lactose then lactose is not getting converted into this part is not happening lactose is gonna accumulate lactose is going to accumulate and then there will be what is happening bacterial bacterial fermentation bacterial fermentation ho jayega and it will be getting converted into what it will be getting converted into what product batao have you ever heard this term hydrogen breath test yes yes very good mustafa right by the gut by gut bacteria it will be converted into methane hydrogen gas and other kind of small organic molecules small organic molecules theek hai and then we you will when you will do the hydrogen breath test hydrogen breath test would come out to be positive in the lactose intolerance so no uh, no cataract and positive hydrogen breath test are we clear theek hai we are clear about galactosemia also now why not is like why there is no cataract in hereditary fructose intolerance fructose intolerance what we are talking about we are talking about the fructose six it is a hexose sugar it is a hexose but this is not an aldose but this is it a ketose ketose this is not an aldehyde so if you have aldehyde reductase it cannot act upon the ketose to convert it into fructitol there is no such thing as fructitol that is why no cataract is found how do fructose uh, like uh, hereditary fructose intolerance happens deficiency of which enzyme i have given you the entire pathway of fructose okay here it is who can tell me how the hereditary fructose intolerance is happening there are two major enzymes uh, which i am going to highlight here now in yellow yellow is the only marker right now i have the fructokinase you see my screen the fructokinase enzyme and another enzyme is aldolase b ठीक है वी आर सीइंग टू एंजाइम्स हियर fructokinase aldolase b fructokinase deficiency is going to cause what kind of disease the aldolase b yes vishant aldolase b is going to cause hereditary fructose intolerance very right very very right right no in hereditary fructose intolerance there is no cataract we have just seen sometimes they give you with something as like hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia remember it will lead to hypoglycemia just know this the very important key point right fructokinase deficiency leads to what the positive 
fructose test in the urine in the urine fructose will come out but this is a benign condition you won't notice it unless like your your urine sample patients urine sample has come to the lab and we have checked it and figured out okay there is a fructose in the urine sample but there is no symptoms as such so we call it as benign condition not harmful as such but then the fructose diet would be in a controlled manner okay but elderly's b deficiency is going to give rise to hereditary fructose intolerance no cataract hypoglycemia would be there Are, am i clear again this is again like two important questions i'm talking about here mm -hmm. yes patel yes vishanti all are ready for the exam yes exactly so now we can compare hey, if there is a question in which we have to compare these three conditions hereditary fructose intolerance galactosemia lactose intolerance right we can do that let's say what else i have if you have too much of the glucose where this glucose 6 phosphate is going to go glucose goes where if you have excess of glucose it starts from the fresh page okay if you have glucose excess of glucose in the diet where do we shunt it we shunt it to the hmp shunt this is going to go for the hmp shunt am i right right there glucose will be converted into glucose 6 phosphate or you can say glucose is directly coming like as a glucose 6 phosphate right right we have the sorbitol right i'm not telling the sorbitol because then uh, most of like students they get confused so i'm i have uh, discussed very well about the sorbitol thing and the galactitol thing in the tnd ronak okay, now let's focus on another very important thing so if you have too much of the glucose in the body right it is going to reroute the glucose into the hmp shunt the glucose 6 phosphate will be converted into what 6 phospho 6 phospho gluconate and the enzyme involved is 6 pdh who can tell me the full form of g6 pdh glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and what you are going to release here what we get here we get 1 nadph nadph because hmp shunt has two halves one is oxidative phase one is oxidative phase another is non oxidative phase in oxidative phase what we get we get nadph 2 nadph per glucose molecule in non oxidative phase what we get we get the pentoses what kind of pentoses such as ribose 5 phosphate where do we need ribose 5 phosphate in the synthesis of your nucleic acid in the synthesis of your nucleic acid am i right am i right aha uh -huh. so 6 phospho gluconate yes vishant very good right 6 phospho gluconate will be converted into ribulose 5 phosphate right again 1 nadph will be released i'm going over very quickly not in detail because since we have done it and you all most of like you know it i'm just trying to come to the diseased part of it that was i'm rushing through it okay 
So ribulose can be converted into ribose five phosphate, right? Which can be taken down to the non-oxidative phases, right? And then we have the transketolase, transaldolase enzymes, and we form the various products. But I'm gonna stop it right here at this point. Why I am discussing it in the cancer. In the cancer cell. What is the need of the cancer cell? Kya karne cancer cell ko? Cancer cells need to divide. Am I right? Cancer cell needs to divide. And I always say, we all know this fact. During that time, the glucose consumption is very, very high. Glucose consumption is very, very high, approximately like 32 to 36 times high, right? And we have, we know about the Crabtree effect also. What is Crabtree effect? That during in the cancer, this is about the cancerous cells, right? Glucose do not just give the ATP, rather do glucose do not just give the ATP. It gives the ATP, glycolysis is gone, but that is like suppressed. Little bit ATP is needed. More is needed is what? More amount of ribose 5-phosphate is needed for the division. That is we are calling it as substrate. I call it as substrate, one of the substrate that is needed for the cell to divide, for the cancerous cells to divide. So most of the glucose will be rerouted towards the anaerobic glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis to produce the substrates for the cancerous cell division and how we are getting the substrates via the hmp shunt so it means glucose in the normal conditions when you have the oxygen but still you want to do this pathway you need to reroute to glucose to the hmp shunt so it means what so it means you have to stop this going to the glycolysis or reduce it. By stopping means you have to reduce its consumption toward like toward it going to the glycolysis but rather more will be shifted towards the HMP shunt. And who is the rate limiting enzyme? Who is the rate limiting enzyme? Phosphofructokinase is the rate limiting enzyme which converts fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So what happens here is this enzyme is inhibited. This enzyme is inhibited. And who is inhibiting it? This was one of the very smart questions. There is TIGAR. One of the, one of the things, right? TIGAR inhibits the phosphofructokinase enzyme. Can you see it? TIGAR inhibits the phosphofructokinase enzyme. Thereby, more of it is rerouted towards the HMP shunt toward the production of the towards the production of the ribose of five phosphate, so the cancer cells can divide. So tigar is tigar is in nutshell. What can I say? Inhibits or reduces glycolysis and promotes cell division cancerous cell division am i right everybody got this point this is the one fact i wanted to uh, tell you okay now there is one more thing about this enzyme g6pdh very important topic G6PDH deficiency leads to what? This is the most common. This is the like first. This is the G6PD deficiency is the most common enzyme deficiency. Most common enzyme deficiency. First most common. Second most common is is pyruvate kinase enzyme in the glycolysis. 
पाइरुवेट काइनेज कहां देखते हैं हम फॉस्फो इनोल पाइरुवेट टू पाइरुवेट वी सिंथेसाइज एटीपी हियर राइट व्हाट डू वी सिंथेसाइज वी सिंथेसाइज एटीपी हियर स्टिल द एंजाइम इज पाइरुवेट काइनेज सो usually i say i all, always keep saying kinase is adding the phosphate adding adding the phosphate that what kinase does but here is the exception this pk is removing the phosphate and you get one atp so this pyruvate kinase enzyme is the second most common and g6 pdh is the first most common first most common enzymatic deficiency in both the cases you get hemolytic patient will show the hemolytic anemia in this also and also here also hemolytic anemia so how the hell you are going to distinguish it in general ki which either it is a gcdh deficiency or the pyruvate kinase deficiency see in the g6pdh deficiency what we see we see the heinz bodies heinz body but in this we don't see no heinz body now you may ask me what are these and why this is different see g6pdh is doing what it is giving you what it is giving it is producing nadph so we should know what is the uses of nadph first that will help you to solve the mystery because since we don't correlate actually generally because these are different different chapters we are studying we are habitual to study in the chapter wise or topic wise fashion we are unable to correlate that is why see how the flow is going every part part is related to another chapter maybe the third chapter maybe like something else at separate separate places you have studied all these topics but i am trying to correlate so that this is the way you must be adopting in future right for the examination that is going to help you to learn more ab uses of nadph is nadph is used in the biosynthesis right now not of our use because we want to come to the heinz bodies okay where else do you see it for the maintenance for maintaining okay my pen is gone maintaining levels of what reduced glutathione another high yield topic reduced glutathione reduced glutathione is needed for what anybody to reduce hydrogen peroxide reactive oxygen species yes 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 very good very good very good i'm just trying to correlate all the things na no? it's like a crime mystery we are solving how the hell the heinz bodies okay so it is needed there and also for the bactericidal activities right activity in treating pmn in treating pmn right polymorpho nuclear p4 poly m4 morpho and for nuclear leukocyte so our focus right now is on glutathione theek okay? hai how how do we see the glutathione you have hydrogen peroxide theek okay? hai forming in the peroxisomes this is dangerous this can corrode the cell linings also the cell walls like the proteins and fats whatever is inside the cell it can destroy it so what we need to do is we need to convert this hydrogen and this spontaneously actually it is formed it is spontaneously formed from the oxygen you get the hydrogen peroxide then there is this enzyme known as what glutathione peroxidase
Satyajit, anybody can sit. This is all the basic and you need it. For those who already know it, they can revise Satyajit and those who don't know it, they can learn. So it is the both ways. Okay, glutathione peroxidase converts H2O2 into what? Into water. Into the water molecule. And for this to happen, glutathione peroxidase makes use of what? The reduced form of the glutathione and then it reoxidizes it. SG. This is how it is done. And then it has to be reconverted back to its reduced form. So, what is the enzyme? Enzyme is glutathione reductase. Why I am writing slowly? So, you can remember for peroxide, you need peroxidase. To reduce it, you need a reductase. And what we are dealing with? We are dealing with G glutathione everywhere. So, you just write glutathione peroxidase, glutathione reductase. Very easy to remember, right? And for glutathione reductase to convert GSSG to into GSH, what it makes use of? It makes use of your NADPH. Voila, mystery solved. So, if you don't, if you have what? Coming back to this. If you have G6PDH deficiency, right, you have low amount of NADPH. So, the entire process is going to halt and then you have lots of peroxide. And these peroxides negatively impact protein and the lipids. Hemoglobin precipitates, lipids, they get hampered. So that's why we are getting the Heinz bodies. That's why we are getting the Heinz body in case of G6PDH deficiency. Good. Are we happy now? And there is like, it is clinically correlated to, to other things also. Funny things, G6PDH deficiency. Let's continue. Now you know about glutathione, how this is NADPH is used is majorly we are looking for the glutathione and glutathione is helping us to convert the H2O2 into the water molecule. And is there any other enzymes which are helping to neutralize the reactive oxygen species another than glutathione peroxidase? Another important thing. There are three enzymes majorly you will see at different places. For the radicals, right, for the radicals or reactive oxygen species, you have glutathione peroxidase. What else? You have catalase. What else? Superoxide dismutase. Superoxide dismutase. Anybody, any questions so far? Should I continue? So, there are now two, three things related to this G6PDH deficiency. First is favism. Now, I am talking about the clinical correlate. Other clinical correlate. One is the fav favism CGD. What is this CGD? CGD stands for chronic G4 granulometers disease. And this is related to enzyme catalase. This is related to enzyme catalase. Favism is related to eating fava beans. And then there is third thing that is the microbiological correlate, which is another question in the exam that is related to the malaria. 
okay there are now three things related to g6pdf deficiency let's talk about cgd first chronic granulomatous disease since catalase enzyme is deficient this is not working properly catalase has similar kind of activity as the glutathione peroxidase had so what is happening glutathione peroxidase this enzyme if this is absent then what you have you have more of the radicals accumulating in the body so what you will see hemolytic anemia you will see the heinz body similar kind of things you will see in the chronic granulomatous just hold on satyajit let me finish with this one i'll i'll, I'll give you the answer okay okay so enzyme catalase is absent right this enzyme is absent so patient is more susceptible to staphylo aureus right ciella e coli candida aspergillus right and symptoms would be very very similar to the g6 pdh deficiency because the enzyme is like somehow related to the reactive oxygen uh, reactive uh, oxygen species but in the cgd you will see that in the medicine class or those who have started it you will see the negative nitro blue tetra zolium test okay that is confirming that whether it is a cgd or the g6 pdh deficiency okay satyajit valia uh, is asking you what it means by conjugated bilirubin when it is bilirubin plus udp glucuronate combi right conjugated means married okay when bil bilirubin get coupled see conjugated not use the word do not use the married but use the couple when it couples with the udp either one or two then it is conjugated bilirubin okay what my point co couple co conjugated it is kind of a sort of making a coupling to like making a couple bilirubin is coupling with the udp glucuronide okay satyajit okay now coming back to this the favism fava beans fava beans are big big beans uh, these are like uh, uh, have you seen the green kidney beans rajma when they are green they are green in color they are actually not red earlier they are green in color similarly are the fava beans you have the big pod you open it like a pea and there are beans inside it and those are very like important and like favorite delicacy in the mediterranean countries right mediterranean countries are those which are like the greece italy spain right greece italy spain turkey they eat the fava beans okay and what this fava beans is to digest this fava beans we need g6 pdh enzyme if the fava beans is ingested by the patient who is having this deficiency it is going to do what it is going to produce stress here right here stress it is going to produce a stress and there will be lots of hydrogen peroxide that are being produced and but since there is no g6 pdh enzyme to rescue to kill or to neutralize the hydrogen peroxide right here then it is going to give rise to hemolytic anemia or actually the patient shows a very severe symptoms like severe anemia after like 26 to 48 hours within like 2 days the patient shows the severe anemia so that is because of the ingestion of the fava beans in the g6 pdh deficiency because fava beans put a stress on the hydrogen peroxide it produces lots of hydrogen peroxide this is a stressor fava beans few drugs are also stressors to produce more hydrogen peroxide right so the patient will show symptoms kind such as what it will pallor pavism is another very important question for the aims hemoglobin urea severe anemia 
and within 26 to 42 hours. Some books is 46, 44, just you have kind of heard an idea. Within one to two days, patient will start showing the symptoms upon ingestion of the fava beans in the patient who are G6 PDH deficient because there are no NADPH or less amount of NADPH is available to neutralize the radicals, free radicals. What my point? So that is another correlate. Now the malaria. Malaria is a funny thing. Actually, malaria what happens is in the G6 PDH deficiency patient, what do we have? We have very high amount of reactive oxygen species. And these re reactive oxygen species actually kills or is helped us like makes the patient less susceptible to the causative organism. What is the causative organism for the malaria? Anybody? Yes, Vishant Q cycle. I know, I know, I know. I am trying to accommodate everything. Less susceptible to malaria. Who can tell me causative organism for the malaria? Plasmodium? Plasmodium? Uh huh. So that is an advantage in the African, like African countries where the patients are, the female is heterozygous of the G6PDH gene, right? They are less susceptible for the malaria. They won't get the malaria easily. That is a favor. So see now how it, everything is, if I zoom out so many, like this thing, And this is how you should be studying in the paper. Like you should have, you should have the both papers register ka, and then you should make all the correlations like this. So simple. Now you know the glycolysis. You can add on the energetics also. You can label the rate limiting enzymes. You can just write down what kind of inhibitors kaha pe act karne wale hai, what kind of diseases they are correlated to. And on then the back side of the paper, then you can explain it in detail. That will give you a really good revision kind of a notes when you are taking the exam. You just glance through everything, phada 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 deka, and then you will be done like anything. Okay. So it is time to wrap up, but I'm going to just take a quick look about this Q cycle, right? Right. This Q cycle. What is this Q cycle? I'm just quickly going over it right in next five minutes and then we will end this session if you have more questions just keep writing maybe i'll type it in okay or i'll i'll answer in the telegram group okay that will be convenient see q cycle we are where we are in the electron transport chain we know there are five complexes q cycle is related to the complex three okay complex three Complex 1 is getting, first complex 1 is getting NADH. NADH say it is getting NADH. Gives its electrons to complex 1. From complex 1 it reaches to the complex 3. Not to complex 2, complex 2 FADH2 is giving. Na? So now complex 3 is giving it to complex 4 and then how it is going to ATP synthase. That is your complex 5, right? The question is, what is this Q cycle? Q cycle is related to the complex 3, right? Complex 3 contains like three important cytochromes, cytochrome C1, B, and one is the risky center. One is the risky center. So cytochrome C, cyto C1, cytochrome B, and risky center, they are contained inside this yellow, this orange thing is your complex 3. So you have this ubiquinol right here, right, which is carrying the electrons from the, which is carrying the electrons from the complex 1. As soon as it fuses right here, as soon as it com comes to the complex 3, this is your complex 3. What it is carrying? It is carrying two electrons. Okay? It is carrying two electrons. It will give one electron to the risky center. And it will give another electron to the cytochrome B. I am going to highlight it in yellow. 
ठीक है दिस यूबिक्यूनॉन हैज गिव वन टू द रिस्की सेंटर एंड वन इलेक्ट्रॉन टू द साइटोक्रोम डी ठीक है एंड फॉर दीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन्स हाउ मेनी प्रोटोन्स टू प्रोटोन्स आर रिलीज्ड आउटसाइड द और नॉट आउटसाइड बट इन बिटवीन द माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन इनर माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन एंड आउटर माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन टू प्रोटोन्स आर रिलीज्ड फॉर द एक्सपेंस ऑफ वन इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज गोइंग टू द रिस्की सेंटर रिस्की सेंटर विल ट्रांसफर दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन टू द साइटोक्रोम सी वन माइंड दिस दिस इज साइटोक्रोम सी वन विच इज गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर दैट फाइनली इलेक्ट्रॉन टू द साइटोक्रोम सी दीज ऑल आर साइटोक्रोम आर आयरन कंटेनिंग ठीक है ना प्रोटीन वी नो दैट सो मेन गोल ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स थ्री इज वट कॉम्प्लेक्स थ्री इज Q is transferring the electrons to the cytochrome C, and then in between there is risky center and the cytochrome C one is involved. But final acceptor is cytochrome C. Final acceptor is cytochrome C, which is going to take it to the complex four. Good. So one electron is transported from Q to cytochrome C, and two protons are being. one half of it look at the another half the second electron was going where to the cytochrome b which is going to transfer it to the ub q nol q theek hai and that is will be converted into an ion so it is holding one electron now there will be second ub q nol that will come to the complex 3 again same thing happened one electron to the risky center one electron to the cytochrome b risky center will transfer the electron to the cytochrome c1 and finally to the cytochrome c and two protons will be released so in total we have two qh2 coming and two times we are transporting protons and the two electrons here are transported to the complex 4 theek hai it is carrying how many four electrons initially but out of four electrons kyunki how many ka ke two ke two electrons were transported and two electrons are holded by this q are you getting my point two qh2 will come two electrons will be transported to the complex four and the four protons are going out so what is the where are the other two electrons two electrons are carried carried by holding it's the kind of a holder this q is holding that now let's look at the another figure see now this q is having first electron is having the second electron will be converted into ubic nol it will go outside right and then it will be reused this is recycling but this is how the entire process works this is known as the q cycle that is this is known as the q cycle because q h2 comes it gets converted into q inside there is already q which gets converted into qh2 which is then again back transported so do you see the cycle that is going on that is why this is known as q cycle because four electrons cannot go as such risky center can just transport one electron at one time cytochrome c can hold one electron at one time right so in nutshell in nutshell if i have to summarize we are using two of the qh2 used right which is containing four electrons actually but two cytochrome c were formed from two qh2 two cytochrome and out for for every one electron transport you are throwing out two protons so since you are transporting two electrons you are throwing out four protons in the mitochondrial space but what is q cycle q cycle if you now look at everything together what do you see qh2 came qh2 came and then this qh2 in the second goes out so this is q is revolving kind of in and out if you take a bigger picture if you look at the bigger picture am i clear satyaji 
Ma'am, how to approach two mark short questions, MCQ and case studies? I lost my mark continuously in the test. Satyajit, you have to focus. See, you have to focus on the keywords. You should be knowing what is the keyword when you are reading the entire text. If you get the habit of just marking the important keywords, not everything, but just the important keywords, you will be able to show, solve the MCQ. You will be able to write a short answer question as well. Because you take the keyword and you make the story around it. That is how you make the short answer questions, long answer questions. In long answer questions, you make the big, big stories. Bada bada stories bana ke usko, you have to fill in the pages. But in the short answer questions, you need the specific keywords. So the teacher knows, okay, now you know the keywords. So probably you know the details also. So he is going to give you the full marks. In MCQs, you should be able to actually correlate the things. That is going to help you most. Otherwise, usually in, you are in the first year. So it, it like keywords usually helps you. Just practice the old back questions. Practice the questions in the behind the book. Do the random tests you have. Anywhere you see the MCQs, just try to solve it. You will get it. MCQs and short answer questions are the scoring, really scoring for the first prof students. Essential fructose a daydreamer. Like I did not get your question. Like what will be the keyword? It's just benign daydreamer. It's just a benign condition. Usually they do not ask, but right, this is like they mislead you in the question. They are giving a clinical case scenario, right? And then you are going to come to the conclusion, okay, uh, there probably is the galactosemia, but they will give you, okay, now the urine test has the fructose in it. But the question also says the cataract. So you are saying, okay, fructose is like, it, the test is positive, but cataract is there. So you at that point in time, they are talking about this benign condition, which is really not causing any diseased issues, but it is there because it is coming out in urine as such. Okay? As such, there is no question. But you will they mislead you in the clinical case scenario by giving these kind of tricks. In hereditary fructose intolerance, you will see the baby had just like shifted or like weaned off. They will use the weaning off is the term. Okay, weaning off is baby ne mama ka breast milk has stopped or started the table food or just had the juices. Usually these kind of the words they use. Great. So thank you very much. And if I have left any question here, please type it in the telegram group. Okay, and then I'll answer you there. Okay. Right, Sandeep. Okay, I'll give you all the details of the hexokinases and where they are related. It is most probably the hexokinase 3, which I'm not right now 100% sure of, but it is most probably hexokinase 3, right? Bye.